TMA uh, is the acronym for thrombotic microangiopathy. It's a very severe life-threatening syndrome um, that uh, also occurs in uh, patients that do not have underlying comorbidities. And TMA uh, actually presents with a typical triad that is uh, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and organ damage, uh, either in the kidneys or in the central nervous system or other atypical um, uh, damage. And uh, this trial is like an umbrella for different pathophysiologies. So outside the transplant setting, the main, uh, uh, the main syndromes are thrombotic, um, thrombocytopenic purpura or TTP and a typical hemolytic uremic syndrome. Now, in uh, uh, patients that have received hematopoietic cell transplantation or HCT, uh, we also observe this syndrome and we call it transplant-associated uh, thrombotic microangiopathy or TATMA. And this syndrome has uh, similar this uh, this triad uh, that we mentioned before, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and organ damage, and presents in patients post allogeneic hematopoietic cell transplantation, both in children and uh, in uh, adults. And uh, it is typically an early complication of transplant, up to 100 days. But we have observed uh, late uh, presentations also in uh, adult patients. And regarding the treatment uh, in transplant-associated uh, TMA, we have made a lot of progress over the last few years because we have understood that TATMA resembles more a typical HUS than TTP. And the good thing about this understanding is that uh, typical HUS has a very effective and safe treatment with uh, complement inhibitors. And up to now, the only complement inhibitor that is approved uh, uh, in Europe and in the US for typical HUS is Equalizuma, which is a terminal complement inhibitor that blocks uh, C5. And uh, eculismab has been used off-label in many children and adults with TATMA. And uh, results uh, have been published and uh, discussed uh, uh, over the years. There, unfortunately, there is no other standard of care uh, for patients with TATMA. Um, we have uh, to, to be very careful about the trigger of the syndrome and try to uh, understand it and uh, treat the trigger of the syndrome. In many patients, uh, this is on their active uh, GVHD, graft version host disease, or other uh, viral infections like CMV or ABV. And in the past, um, we have used uh, plasma exchange, which is not very efficient, it's, and uh, not many centers use it uh, by now. And uh, other uh, treatments uh, are under study, uh, under study for TATMA, like uh, the lectin inhibitor, nasoplimab, and uh, defibrotide also in some uh, patients. This is a finding uh, we, we had from our uh, patients. We retrospectively studied patients uh, with uh, GVHD that received uh, ruxolitinib in our center, and we present this data as a poster in this uh, EBMT. Um, it's an interesting clinical observation, to be honest with you. Um, we administered uh, ruxolitinib, which is a TAC2 inhibitor that is now approved uh, for acute GVHD. But we have also we observed an independent association of uh, transplant associated TMA with ruxolitinib in uh, administration and also with uh, the severity of chronic GVHD. So uh, one explanation might be that it's uh, the severe GVHD that uh, is a trigger for TMA, and these patients, um, uh, these patients has received uh, uh, Jacobi uh, ruxolitinib for uh, their GVHD. But we, in uh, the statistical point of view, we found an independent association with the ruxolitinib administration itself. 
So um, there, there is not enough data to explain this clinical uh, observation. And uh, to be honest, it's very hard to, to, to generate this data because uh, almost all patients, many patients that receive ruxinolitinib uh, in the transplant setting and outside the transplant setting uh, do have thrombocytopenia. So um, uh, we believe that uh, uh, TMA is really understudied and underreported in patients uh, that receive ruxinolitinib. And one of the reasons to, to, uh, that we announced these results is to, to, uh, to pay attention uh, and to warn uh, clinicians about this possible association and, uh, you know, to make them uh, further look into the possibility of a TMA in patients receiving luxolidin. And this is not strange because over the years we have learned that many biologic agents are associated uh, with TMA and uh, in uh, many of these uh, drug-associated uh, TMA cases, uh, we know that complement is uh, the background and complement inhibitors might be of use.